First of all, I just wanted to introduce myself. And my name is Mary Caesar. I'm a Cascadena elder from the Art First Nations in southern Yukon in the Watanake area. And I'm an artist, a writer, a, a poet, and um, residential school survivor. And um, <clears throat> I'm I'm of the Wolf Clan. Our Casca tradition is uh, based on a matriarchal system. So, because my mom is a wolf, I'm I follow my mom's lineage. So I'm a wolf from the Wolf Clan. And um, I'm a residential school survivor. I. Went to Lower Post Residential School when I was four years old. And I was there for four years. And the residential school system affected my life, really devastated my life. But when I was at Lower Post Residential School, I um, that's when I started drawing and sketching. That's where my art started. And then um, when I became a, when I grew into a teenager, I remember I started reading a lot. It was my way of escaping the trauma I went through in residential school. And I was always inspired by great women artists like Grandma Moses and Emily Carr and Frida Kahlo. And I have two sons. I met my partner when I was 18 years old. And over the years, I've always followed my traditional ways because my parents always took us children out on the land. So I grew up mostly around the France Lake area. That's where my mom and dad's traditional land is. They were born and raised in Francis Lake. So during the summers when we came back from residential school, my parents always took us out on the land. And that's what helped me to survive. My parents were traditional Casca people. And my dad was a traditional storyteller. And so was my mom. So, um, I learned the traditional teachings from my parents, all our traditional customs, our spiritual laws, our stories. And I was very, uh, we were a part of nature. I lived on the land for, for a long time when I was younger. And I remember like we used to hunt around Francis Lake my dad would hunt, and and with the moose he he killed. My, my mom would make moose hides, and um, we used to climb mountains. We used to hunt up on a mountain, and my mom told me the story about Grandpa Old Chief, of how that one day, one time, Grandpa Old Chief. He um he had he went hunting somewhere around France Lake and he climbed this he was following the sheep and the sheep was going up on a tall mountain and so grandpa followed him followed that sheep and he just but went up to the top following that sheep and that sheep turned that sheep went around the mountain so my grandfather was stuck on a mountain there. He looked down and he saw how far he was. And so he clung on to the to the rocks there on the side of the mountain. And then just out of the blue, a big eagle came flying and it landed right beside my grandpa. And so grandpa climbed on its back and the eagle flew him back down the mountain. And these were the stories I grew up with. My mom 
my mom and dad told me a lot of stories of our people, how we had strong medicine people and some medicine people in our tribe, our nation had special gifts to predict the weather. They worked with the weather. I remember growing up, there was this, this medicine man, his name was Biscuit Boy. And he had special gift to, to change the weather. And so like, I don't know how they, they do that, but these were special gifts that our creator blessed the Dene people with. And the Casket Dene nation were part of the Dene nation. And um, long time ago, our people, they were gifted with special powers to, to work with people, to heal, to work with, with plants, to heal people. They, they could uh, predict the weather. They prophesied a lot of changes going to happen. And so right now we're going through the changes. And the Hopi people and Barba Looking Horse, he's the 19th keeper of the sacred pipe, the white cap buffalo woman um, passed down, gave to the Lakota Sioux. So Orville Looking Horse and the Hopis say we're going through a big change. We're going to go through a big change and that only the spiritual shall survive. And Right now, we're going through those changes. And um, I've been an artist since I was in residential school. And over the years, when I sobered up in 1990, 91, I went, I started on my healing journey. And I went back to school. I went to Nanaimo to Vancouver Island University. I started school there in September 1999, and I completed my two-year fine art diploma. And after that, I went back home to Watson Lake, and, and then my then I was invited to go to Europe. I went to Europe three times. First time I went to Switzerland to Europe. It was in September 2005 with 10 other First Nations artists. <clears throat> and one of my artwork is uh, at the uh, Monam Art Gallery there in Switzerland. And my painting was about my experience in Lord Post Residential School. And so I feel that uh, my healing journey too is a part of this climate change. Um, climate change is really affecting our people because now I feel that uh, because I grew up with nature, I'm very close to nature and I have a spiritual connection to the land or animals, plants, I feel um, somehow uh, because I got so busy with my art and I kind of have to reconnect myself and get back on the land. And I feel that that's what our people have to do now because our elders, they say that we have to go back on the land and and start relearning our traditional ways and relearn our traditional teachings. And because they say what's gonna happen, it's gonna have a drastic effect on our on our people. And I feel that that's what's happening right now. 
um, rivers, like the Fraser River is drying up. There's other big rivers drying up in southern BC. And sometimes I wonder what's going to happen to the Liard River because I live near the Liard River and our Casca people live near the river. I noticed this summer when I was going to the to Finiston Lake to the Kutsikaya mine site, I noticed the Money Creek at Francis Lake that flows into Francis Lake. It's getting really shallow. The lake at Francis Lake is getting shallow too. And I noticed from the plane flying over from Watson Lake to Kutsikaya, see a lot of river lakes that are drying up. And this all this is going to affect the animals. It's affecting our plants. It's even affecting us, like affecting our health. It's affecting our, our you know, four aspects of ourselves our mental, our spiritual, emotional, and physical because of pandemic, pandemics, the COVID pandemic that happened. And it's a really, um, we're just going through a really um, kind of like a catastrophic time right now. And our elders tell us we've got to get back on the land, get prepared for what's going to happen. So I know I bet I started going to these elders workshops back home, and I hear like a lot of elders, Casca elders, they talk about we have to start, um, we have to start buying supplies, supplies like tents. Um, fish nets, um, you know, outdoor survival equipment, like um, guns, ammunition, um, dry goods, food. We're going to start growing our own gardens, Start uh, and we're going to start sharing with each other. Because um, our elders, they predict that when the skies start changing color, that's when the famine's going to start. So that's what we have to prepare for. And we have to teach our young people, the youth, to start learning our traditional teachings and our ways our languages, get them to be, you know, set up cultural camps on the land so we could, so they could learn how to hunt, fish, cut up a moose, make dry meat, learn how to make moose hides, that sort of thing. Teach them our traditional skills. So I'm, I'm just like, I'm an elder now. I see a lot of changes happening. And I feel that um, those teachings I was raised up with, the stories, I feel it's starting to come back. And now I'm, I have this, um, I believe that the Creator is helping me too, to get out in the world and tell my story and to teach people. So with that, I, I thank you for inviting me to, to share my story.